بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين uh, Alhamdulillah, we have Tawfir to continue our study of international relations in Islam based on the book by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli Hafadahullah. As you remember, we were talking about unity within Ummah, Muslim Ummah. Uh, then, inshallah, after this, we'll talk about unity among all believers in God, all monotheists, followers of Abrahamic faith, and then. Uh, wider unity among human beings. Um, after referring to some of the sayings of Amir al in the last session, in the second half of the last session, then uh, he continues with uh, what Amir al salam said in Nahjul Balagh uh, as a kind of warning. He referred to Bani Ismail, to the children of Prophet Ibrahim through Prophet Ismail, and also Bani Ishaq, children of Hazrat Ibrahim through uh, Hazrat Ishaq, and then Bani Israel in particular, which are from Bani Ishaq. Ishaq was the father of Prophet Yaqub, and Bani Israel are children of Prophet Yaqub. So he says, as long as they followed uh, children of Prophet Ibrahim, as long as they followed the path of Prophet Ibrahim and prophets, they had power, they had dignity, they had honor. For example, uh, Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli refers to uh, the fact that Allah, after uh, testing Ibrahim in different ways, Finally, he uh, appointed him as Imam for all mankind. وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَعَلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ أَحْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ So he passed all the tests and um, Allah then chose him as an Imam for all people. He said, what about my progeny? And Allah said, this would not reach uh, those who are oppressors or unjust. Then he refers to the case of Prophet Dawood, who was from progeny of Prophet Ibrahim uh, through Ishaq. So Prophet Dawood, Quran says, فَحَذَمُوهُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتُ وَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Allah gave him kingdom, uh, Allah gave him wisdom, Allah taught him. Uh, so this was a great honor for the followers of uh, this path, this tradition. And he says in general, Allah says, فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا Prophet Sulaiman also hakaza the same. Uh, for example, he refers to the verse about the Queen of Saba visiting him. And when uh, she saw the grandeur and glory of the palace of Prophet Suleiman or house or uh, maybe it was like a big house or plus uh, she was very humbled and she seems to be very nice person not uh, stubborn not arrogant so as soon as uh, she realized that she is uh, interacting with someone of exceptional you know power and support by Allah uh, she said, Rabbi inni nafsi 
وأسلم مع سليمان لله رب العالمين. This was a conversion, a transformation. My Lord, I have done injustice to myself, and I am uh, submitting and surrendering along with Suleiman to Allah, to God, the Lord of all worlds, or the Lord of the inhabit intelligent inhabitants of the Rabb al So this was the case, but unfortunately, later what happened was they deviated from the path of the prophets. They were attached to, uh, you know, maybe dunya, etc. Not all of them, but a very good large number of them. Therefore, they lost their honor, they lost their dignity of uh, nation and were ruled by the kings and emperors they ruled them instead of Dawood and Suleiman and someone like Ibrahim etc and they uh, as I remember when he used this uh, you know analogy this he says they made them people of uh, Dabar and Wabar. Dabar and Wabar. Because he said, Fatarakuhum alatan masakin echwana dabar and wabar. They humiliated them, they uh, made them very poor, and they made them brothers of Dabar and Wabar means they made them uh, responsible for taking care of animals <laughs> dabar is the injury of camel wabar is like the uh, hair or the wool on the animal so they had basically become uh, cleaners and look out take care of the animals they used to have kings, but they brought them to this level. So Amirul Mu'minin says, look at three incidents. Ayatollah Jawad Yamuli puts it in this way. When prophetic uh, governors, rulers, and kings were there. Two, when people who were not qualified and people who were not capable inherited their government and they were not able to run it properly and therefore uh, they were defeated and they were uh, undermined by emperors and kings and then he says now if you want not to go the same path you should follow your Imam, you should help me and follow me, accept my leadership so that we don't go back the same. Unfortunately, they didn't listen to his advice and unfortunately, as Ayatollah Jawadi says, then Umavids and Abbasids did what kings and emperors did with uh, Bani Ibrahim. They made them again people of Wabar and Dabar to look after, you know, worldly needs of the caliphs, etc. And basically to be uh, restricting their ambitions to things which are uh, harmless for the uh, people who had power. After this, he says, okay, now that we are talking about Muslim unity, what are the areas or what are the things around which this unity can be established? Uh, this unity is based on religion of Islam. And religion should be 
a unifying factor. Any religion which is divisive or any understanding of religion which is divisive is wrong, is a misunderstanding. Uh, Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, when he was blaming Kufians, the people of Kufa, uh, who were uh, indifferent towards the agent of Muawiyah called Nu'man ibn Bashir, he says, Ma tantadaruna bi nasrakum rabbakum. What are you waiting for in supporting and helping your Lord? So, why you don't support your Lord? And tansurullah and surkum, why you don't help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course, helping Allah, as we know, Quran says, and tansurullah. Or you know, giving loan to Allah, man Allah. It's a matter of we doing something for the sake of God and for divine cause. Otherwise, you know, we cannot help Him. Don't you have a religion that would bring you together? Don't you have kind of uh, a kind of positive uh, care a kind of ghayra that this at least make you you know uh, motivated to do something to defend yourself and your and people etc your religion so ama deenun yajma'ukum from this we realize that deen religion must bring us together bring people together and the prophets used to do the same, used to bring people together. Pharaoh, on the other hand, used to divide people. وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَا شِيَعًا Shia is different from Shia. Shia means divided groups. Okay, now that we say religion brings unity, so we have to analyze what are there in religion, in particular in religion of Islam. So one factor is Quran. The Holy Quran by itself uh, is a unifying factor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بَحَبْ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Surah uh, chapter Al Imran uh, 103, verse 103. This Hablullah has been uh, studied by many Mufassirin scholars and he says, this Hablullah, which elsewhere Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ Instead of Hablullah, it says, يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever holds on to God. So holding to a uh, rope of God, holding on to God, they must be the same. And it means that through this rope, you will get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This must be religion of God, this Hablullah, that connects us to God. It's a path towards God. And part of the uh, process of holding onto this religion is holding onto the Quran as the main source of this religion. So Quran is also Hablullah. After Quran, the second thing is Sunnah, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amir al Mu'minin in Nahjul Balagha, Sermon 96, he says that Dafanallahu bihid waqa'in wa atfa'a bihid thawa'ir allafa bihi ikhwana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Prophet, he buried all the hatreds and extinguished the fire of enmities and made people close to each other brought hearts of people closer to just so that they become brothers so this is with the prophet Allah did this with the prophet with the character of the prophet and with the activities of the prophet so Rasulullah is a role model is a uswa and since his mission is also, uh, universal, his being role model is also universal. So he can be role model for everyone. 
and everything that he did or say we should try to follow unless there is a reason that this was only for Rasulullah because there might be some issues that he had uh, other tasks that we may not have but in general everything that he does and says is a uh, role model and example for us to follow then he refers to some of the great characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his ability to receive all the divine grace that Allah was uh, sending to him he talks about knowledge of Rasulullah about his open and large chest about his steadfastness and persistence about his hijrah about his jihad about his ijtihad working hard about uh, standing up for social justice and equity and fairness so these are some of the qualities of the prophet and for this reason allah says so Allah praises his noble traits of character and then he says Rasulullah is one of the things that can be used as a point of unity to get united with him and around him. Allah says, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ If you conflict over something, return it to Allah and his messenger. So means that you should not be divided, you should not fight over it, just leave it to Rasulullah so that your unity can remain. Amir al muminin also says about this in Nahjul Balagha, Sermon 100, that whoever follows Rasulullah, his Sunnah, and things like that, then they would be able to join, to join the Ummah, to join the truth, to join the uh, causes. Otherwise, they would be uh, going out of religion or would remaining behind, etc. The third after Quran and the Prophet is Etra, household and family of the Prophet. They also have great role in bringing unity. Uh, Hablullah, as we said, or Urvatul Wuthqa uh, in the Quran is interpreted as, you know, Quran uh, or sometimes religion. Also in our hadith, Hablullah. And Urvatul Wuthqa is taken to refer to Ahlul Bayt. And these two don't conflict because Ahlul Bayt and Quran are very much closely connected with each other. Like a rope from two threads. You, uh, you know, make a rope with two threads. So when uh, uh, Rasulullah said, "Inni tarukun fi kumuthakalain kitab Allah wa itrati ma in tamathaktum bihma lan tadlu," shows that Quran and Ahlul Bayt together are Hablullah. If someone just goes for Quran without Ahlul Bayt, is a problem. If someone just goes to Ahlul Bayt without Quran, again, is a problem. We need to have both. Imam Zainul Abidin said the ma'asum, inf the infallible, uh, is the one who holds on to Hablullah, divine rope, which is the Quran. And the infallible and the Quran, till day of judgment, will never separate from each other. Imam guides people with the help of Quran. And the Quran also. Uh, refers to Imam so Imam refers to the Quran Quran refers to the Imam in the Quran look at this beautiful ayah Surah Isra verse 9 in the Quran truly this Quran guides towards 
the path which is the most upright certainly Imama is part of this path that the Quran is uh, guiding towards it and then Imam Zainul Abidin says huwa al mu'tasimu bi hablillah wa hablullah huwa al Quran la yaftarqan ila yawm al qiyamah wal Imam yahdi ila al Quran wal Quran yahdi ila al Imam so Imam guides towards the Quran Quran guides towards the Imam they are very much together Imam Baghir says the verse Wala tatafarragu in Surah Al Imran, verse 103, shows that Allah knew, because Allah knows the future, that they are going to be divided. Especially about, he says, Walaya. Uh, so he warned them and said, don't be divided. Then he refers to some hadith about Ahlul Bayt being Hablullah. We said Quran is Hablullah, Ahlul Bayt are also Hablullah. For example, Imam Baghir alayhi salam said, Alu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi hum Hablullah alladhi amara bil-i'tisam bih. Faqala wa'tasimu bihablillahi jami'ah. The family of the Prophet are the divine rope that Allah has said you must hold on to it. Or Imam Sadiq said, He referring to this, he said, We are the rope. When Imam Kazim was asked about, He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hablullah al Mateen. Of course, other Imams too, but. He referred to the first Imam. So this shows that uh, Hablullah is possible to be applied to the Quran, is possible to be applied to Ahlul Bayt, and they are not separate from each other. Then Ayatollah Jawadi says that how infallible Imams for the sake of preservation of unity and for guarding that they acted as a light in darkness of the night. They tried to keep people guided and united. Amir al Mu'minin says, Innama mathali baynakum ka mathali siraj fi dhulma yastadi ubihi man walajaha. My example among you is like the example of a lantern that is in darkness and whoever enters wants to use the light of that lantern then he says Imam Mahdi Sharif. in particular we talked about all the Imams but in particular Imam Mahdi Sharif is also a unifying figure Amir al muminin says about him Ala wa inna man adrakaha minna yasri fiha bisiraj munir wa yahdu fiha ala misal salihin li yahilla fiha ribqa wa yu'taqa fiha raqqa wa yasta'a shu'aba wa yash'aba sad'a The very last part to bring different branches different fractions together is a very important part of the mission of imam mahdi sharif so alhamdulillah we finish this part there are uh, very few just pages about maybe four pages that we finish muslim unity and then inshallah we go to the unity among Ahlul Kitab or followers of Prophet Ibrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.